students i welcome you in today's session of physics as you all know very well that uh, we are discussing a topic electricity this is the lecture number 3 of your chapter number 8 electricity in the pre, uh, two previous lectures we had covered out most of the topics of this chapter now today's class we are going to discuss the behavior of electric charges clear so uh, we are getting started so it has been shown by the experiment there are the two of electric charges in our first lecture i already told you there are the two of types of charges exist the first one is your positive charge and the other one is your negative charge so a positive charge repel another positive charge but a positive charge attracts a negative charge means the same charges repel each other and the two opposite charges attract each other fine this is the thing uh, written here so we will now describe some activity to show the existence of two charge types of electric charges and their interaction from the above discussion we concluded that depending on the nature of their electric charges two charged object may attract or repel each other so here you can see there are the two points or three uh, four points given here the first one says that if an object has a positive charge and the other object has a negative charge clear then what happen <coughs> then the two objects attract each other in other words a positive charge and the negative charge attract each other now the second one if the two objects have positive charge they repel each other as i already told you the two uh, same charges repel each other while the opposite charges attract each other same thing is written here in the point number 3 if the two objects have negative charge they repel each other or you can say that two negative charges repel each other fine so i told you everything many times when we take off woolen or synthetic clothes like polyester and nylon clothes our body hairs stand erect their ends this because rubbing or friction while taking off these clothes charge the body hairs with the same kinds of electric charge so due to the like charges of the body repel another the repulsion make the body hair stand erect now we will discuss about how the an object is charged fine so here you can see that we are going to discuss this from uh, from the six example we find that a glass rod rubbed with silk acquire the ability to attract the small uncharged pieces of paper the objects showing this effect of attracting other object are said to be electrically charged or just charged the process of giving electric charge to an object is called charging the object fine now we will come to what is conservation of charge this is important one you have learned that on rubbing an object with another object electrons get transferred from an one object to another this means that the charge on an object is either due to the gain of electrons or due to the loss loss of electrons there is no creation or destruction of charges it is only a redistribution of charges for example when a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth electron get transferred from the glass rod to the silk cloth so the glass rod acquires the positive charge due to the loss of electrons and the silk wire acquire negative charge due to the gain of electrons but the sum of total of electrons in the system of the glass rod and the silk clothes remains the same fine so hence the law of conservation of electric charges state that the sum of the electric charges in a system is always constant this is the important line please remember this the charge in a system are conserved so whether an object will lose electron or gain electron during rubbing depending on the nature of the material of the object the material like glass woolen clothes hair and ball pin ripple loses electron more easily and hence get positively charged on rubbing on the other hand the materials which are like silk rubber balloon comb polythene gain electron more easily and gets negatively charged during rubbing fine now we will discuss about the types of electric charge and their interactions how will you interact the charges so it has been shown experiment that there are two type of electric charges i told you earlier that there is a positive charge and there is a negative charge so positive charge repel another positive charge but a positive charge attract a negative charge similarly negative charge repel another negative charge but a negative charge attracts a positive charge so we will now describe some activity should show the existence of two type of electric charges and their interactions from this discussion we concluded that depending on the nature of electric charges two charged object may be attract or repel each other this is the first one if one object has positive charge and the other object has negative charge 
then the two object attract each other in other words positive charge and the negative charge attract each other clear this thing we already discussed in our topic if the two objects have positive charge they repel each other fine similarly if the two objects have negative charges they also repel each other because as i told you earlier the two uh, same charges repel each other while the opposite charges attract each other there is that an activity to describe this phenomena you please uh, study this activity and tell me what uh, you learn from this activity in this comment section fine now i move to there is an another activity you can see here the glass rod in a beaker uh, you have to also this is your homework you have to also learn this activity fine now i move to our next topic there are the three activities given here electrical conductor and insulator this is the important one so just read it properly so electrical conductor and insulator what are conductor and insulator so first thing i would like to tell you in some substances the electric charge can flow easily while in other they cannot like wood if you take wood then electric charge is not possible to flow in wood so all the substances can be divided in mainly two electrical categories conductor and insulators so conductors are the materials that allow the electrons to flow easily through them all metals are good conductor in nature a charge conductor has an ability to pass on the charge to an uncharged conductor by making a contact due to movement of electrons some common conductors are silver copper iron water and human body clear on the other hand what are insulators insulators are the material which do not allow electrons or electricity to pass through them some common insulators you can see here like glass rubber plastic clothes non metal etc we have just seen that some of the substances are conductor whereas some are other insulators we will now explain the reason for the difference in their behavior so you can see here all the electrons like metal have some electrons which are loosely held by the nuclei nuclei means nucleus of their atom these electrons we call them free electrons and can move from one atom to the another fine the presence of free electrons in a substance make it a conductor of electricity the electrons present in insulators are strongly held by the nuclei of their atom since there are no free electrons in an insulators which can move from one atom to another an insulators does not allow electric charge or electricity to flow through it clear here is a list of conductor and insulators you please remember this list so that you can identify which one is your insulators and which one is your conductor fine you can see here there is a list of conductor silver copper gold iron aluminium human body and for insulators wood polyester rubber fur wool nylon now we will discuss about what are the methods of charging <coughs> this thing we are going to discuss now so the process of giving electric charge to an object is called the charging of an object an uncharged object may be charged by the following method first one is your charging by friction just remember the methods of charging because uh, this thing uh, we have to uh, i think ask in your examination so the simplest method of charging of an object is to rub with another object as silk cloth wool and clothes hair paper or polythene so when an object is rubbed with another object then there is a friction between them this friction charges the object the charging of an object by rubbing it with another object is called charging by friction the charging of a glass rod by rubbing it with a silk cloth is an example of charging by friction clear the simplest method of charging to rub with another suitable objects such as silk cloth or woolen clothes clear paper or polythene when an uncharged object is rubbed with another uncharged object there is a friction between them this friction charges the object the charging of an object by rubbing it with with the another object is called charging by friction so you have to understand what is the charging by friction the rubbing of the two objects with one another is known as charging of friction the charging of a glass rod by rubbing it with a silk cloth is an example of charging by friction in this method some of the free electrons get transferred from one object to another 
the object that loses electrons get positively charged while the object that get electrons by the first object gets negatively charged fine now we will discuss about the charging by conduction what is charging by conduction so in charging by conduction a charged body is in direct contact with an uncharged body so that transfer of charge can takes place the total charge on the charged body gets equally distributed between the two objects in contact and the uncharged body acquire a similar charge to that of the charged body in the given figure you can see is below when a negatively charged rod is brought in contact with a neutral metal the electrons move from one rod to the metal now come to the charging by induction you can see here an uncharged body has same number of positively and negatively charged particle in it when a charged object is brought near an uncharged object the charge on the charged object will attract a positive charge on the uncharged object this causes attraction between the charge and uncharged object so if a negatively charged object is brought near an uncharged body the positively charged particles in the uncharged object will get attracted to it while the negatively charged particles get repelled as a result the positively charged particle of the uncharged object face toward the negatively charged object while the negatively charged particles of the uncharged object deposits at the farther end away from the negatively charged object in this way charged and uncharged objects attracts fine this is the experiment showing the charging and uncharging fine so when a positively charged object is placed near an uncharged object the opposite to this will happen clear if you change the polarity means if you replace the positive with negative or negative with the positive closeness or nearness to a positive charged object causes movement of negatively charged particle in an uncharged object this causes distribution of charged particle in the uncharged object this phenomena is known as induction the process is, uh, is called the charging by induction fine this is the figure uh, please remember this figure charging by uncharged body distrib distribution of charge fine i hope the Uh, it is clear everything till now now uh, we will discuss about from here it is interesting to note that if we open a tap to get a thin but regular stream of water and bring a charge comb near it the stream of water is attracted towards the charge comb this shows that water gets also charged by induction so far we have discussed the charging of various objects we will now describe how the electric charge of an object detected the electric charge on an object can be detected by using the instrument which name as electroscope we will now discuss the electroscope so here you can see this is the methods for charging all the methods are describing here what are the methods first one is your charging by friction the second one is charging by conduction and the third one is charging by induction i hope it is clear now we will move to what is electroscope you can see here uh, the next topic is electroscope i hope you are familiar with this electroscope you learn in this uh, previous classes so the electroscope is a device for detecting electric charge of an object clear for which purpose we use electroscope to detect electric charge electroscopes are of two types uh, what are the types of electroscope so first one is your pitfall electroscope and the other one is gold leaf electroscope the most popular type of electroscope is the gold leaf electroscope by using electroscope we can tell whether an object is electrically charged or not fine so we will now describe the construction and the working of simple electroscope so there you can see these are the two figures of electroscope this clear you can see here top of a metal paper clip cardboard open metal paper aluminum foil leaves and the glass bottle we had taken here and if we pass over charge then what happened the leaves are move far uh, far away in this figure you can see fine so this is the working of a electroscope i am not going in detail you have to do it by yourself uh, read it properly and any doubt kindly ask me in the comment section fine now we will move to gold leaf electroscope you can see here this is the type of electroscope which is your the electroscope so what is the gold leaf electroscope 
so the gold leaf electroscope is invented uh, by in 1786 by abraham bennett consists of a glass bell jar fitted on a wooden base you can see here this is the figure of gold leaf electroscope this there is an insulator plug at the mouth of the bell jar through which a brass rod passes a seal insulated the brass rod from the glass jar a brass disc is fixed on the upper end of the brass rod and the lower end has two thin flexible and sensitive gold leaves there are two earth metal foil strips on the either sides of the gold leaves they increases the sensitivity of the electroscope by taking any charge leakage from the glasses if an excess charge accumulates the gold leaves they stretch out touch the strips and get discharged the charge protect the leaves from and current clear i hope uh, this is clear so students uh, i am ending this lecture uh, in our next lecture we will discuss about detection of charge with electroscope how you will you detect the charge with the help of electroscope this is the topic so till that student do study thank you class thank you very